Hi everyone, welcome to High Breeds. So today I want to talk about um, one of the more common requests that I get um, in the teen section, which is people wanting real books or realistic fiction. Um, what they usually mean by this is they want something contemporary, not historical. They want something that could happen in real life. So not sci-fi, not fantasy, no dragons, no monsters, no weird technology that we don't have, right? They want books about teenagers living their lives, um, books about relationships, breakups, family, friends, uh, books about school or books about summer vacation, uh, books that could happen in real life, um, but are still fictional, still stories about made up characters. Um, you know, a lot of times people will come in asking, you know, I want to read something real. I want to read something emotional. I want to read something about a relationship. Those are, those are the sorts of requests I'm getting um, that all kind of fall under this contemporary fiction or fiction that is happening in current times. Uh, so today I'm going to share couple of books that would that would fit there some again about relationships some about breakups some about friendships um you know friendships also have breakups uh family drama um school drama things like that so if you are in the mood for something that could happen that could take place in real life um here are some suggestions for you this is 10 blind dates by ashley elston so imagine your grandma, aunts, uncles, cousins, all set you up on dates when you find yourself suddenly single before the holidays. This is what happens to Sophie. Um, her large Italian extended family decides they know who might be best for her. And then they take bets on which date might lead to a, to a relationship. And uh, her ex is also able to see a lot of this play out on social media as her family, uh, you know, posts videos and pictures of, of various dates and things like that. So this is a fun and lighthearted, silly romance. Um, you know, there's some drama, but it is very silly drama. Um, and basically it's about how family can make things very awkward. Next, we have Barely Missing Everything by Matt Mendez. So Juan wants to play basketball and JD wants to be a filmmaker. See, there's Juan and there's JD. Uh, their neighborhood though in the world doesn't seem to want that for them. Uh, Juan and JD are Mexican and they are from the wrong side of El Paso. Their good intentions don't seem to matter when everyone has already labeled them as bad or failures or worse. Um, Juan and JD are still hopeful for their futures, and this book shows their strong friendship and how, how that friendship really helps them get through some of the more difficult aspects of their life. So this is a more serious and uh, maybe heavy book, um, you know, some, some difficult topics are discussed, but I would still say it's easy to get into. The writing is, um, it's relatable, it's kind of like having a conversation with a friend. So. It's, it's easier to, to read about, even though the topics themselves are difficult to read about. This is Summer Bird Blue by Akemi Don Bowman. And this book is about Rumi, who is sent to stay with her aunt in Hawaii after her sister dies in a car accident. There she explores her grief through music and songwriting, and she's able to reconcile with her mother, uh, who she is not really speaking with after the accident. So this is another heavy book. Obviously it's dealing with um, the death of a family member. The writing itself is very musical as Rumi is, um, she is a songwriter, her and her sister would write music together. So it can be a very moving um, thinking, think about listening to some of your, your favorite sad songs and how they make you feel. Um, this is a book about teenage grief and the ways that we move through our grief and get to the other side of it. All right, I'm going to include one rule breaker in this collection of contemporary novels. This is actually historical fiction. Like a Love Story by Abdi Nazemian is set in 1989 in New York City. So it's set um, at the height of the AIDS crisis um, and I wanted to include it in this group of emotional realistic books 
just because of how well it deals with so many topics. Um, it still manages to be a very sweet story. So Reza is moving to New York City with his mom to live with his stepdad and, and his stepbrother. Reza is gay, but he is not out. He believes that if he doesn't admit that he is gay, that that will keep him safe from AIDS. Art is the only out kid at Reza's new school. And Judy is Art's best friend who is obsessed with fashion and Madonna. And Judy has an uncle who's gay and who has AIDS. Um, so Judy and Art um, have kind of adopted Judy's uncle as, as their you know, parental figure. Um, Judy and Art both find themselves attracted to Reza, um, and Reza, who again is gay but terrified of AIDS, decides that he will um, pursue a relationship with Judy, thinking, again, this will keep him safe, um, even though him and Art have undeniable chemistry. Um, they get along as friends, and Art is clearly into him. So, as you can imagine, this brings about <laughs> some troubles um, as as Art and Reza get closer together and Judy starts to figure out that maybe Reza's not really into her. Um, you know, he's definitely wants to be friends with her and they both love Madonna and things like that, but um, he is not romantically into her. So parts of the story are very funny um, and very awkward and, and fun to read, but again, because it is set in 1989 in New York City. There's a lot of talk about um, how the AIDS crisis was dealt with politically and socially um, and how the gay community kind of rallied around each other and really supported each other. So if people come in asking for something real and something emotional, this is definitely one that I would recommend. The How and the Why by Cynthia Hand is a book about family. What makes a family? Who makes your family? Um, and how do you define it? So Cass loves her parents, but she wants to know who she is and where she came from. Who was her biological mother, um, who was a um, pregnant teenager? Um, you know, she wants to know what happened to her. Now that Cass herself is, um, I believe she's 17 or 18 in the book, she's wondering, you know, what was her mother like, her biological mother like at that age? Um, and she has a series of letters that were written by her mother to her um, that she is now able to read. So she's hoping that these letters will give her some answers to the questions she has um, and trying to figure out who she really is. Um, this book is told both uh, in present day from Cass's point of view and also we get to read the letters from her mother. So again, this is a book about family, about adoption, um, and about how we define our families. What I Carry by Jennifer Longo is another book about family. Uh, so Muriel is about to age out of foster care. Um, she's about to turn 18 and she has one survival strategy. Don't get attached, whether that means to uh, friends in the various schools she's been in or to um, different foster parents. But new relationships, including one with her most recent foster mother, um, a potential best friend, and a boy who helps Muriel see wonder in a terrible world, challenge that. Um, she is starting to get attached. Uh, so this book is full of likable characters. Um, it is honest and authentic. And again, is another story about what it means to create your own family. All right, we will end on a light note. So we have here, Never Always Sometimes by Adi Al Said. This is a book about Dave and Julia. They are high school seniors, best friends, who refuse to become high school cliches. So this means they're not gonna go road tripping. They're not gonna go skinny dipping. They are definitely not going to fall in love with each other, but uh-oh. <laughs> Dave has had a crush on Julia for a while. So we see uh, Dave trying not to become that high school cliche of best friends falling in love. Um, but at its heart, this is a love story. It's clever and charming, it has heart and sass. It's another fun and light one. Um, and again, it's the end of their senior year. So if you're in the mood for something set in the spring, um, summer is just around the corner, this is a book that I would recommend to you. Okay, so there you have it. Um, 
a couple more books to add to your list uh, depending on what you're into. If you're into um, some more serious dramatic fiction or some lighthearted but yet realistic fiction, um, these are some of the titles we have on our shelves that are contemporary and again you can always come in and ask for these. You can um, request something over the library takeout. Uh, you can chat us. You can also um, check on our catalog. And um, if you don't want the physical copy, we of course have eBooks and audiobooks available through the catalog. All right, thanks for listening and happy reading.